Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to 31 Days of Cut Files with MK and Janet. And today is, I believe, our last day of cut files that I created. And I'm super excited to start next week with a bunch of cut files that MK created. Today's cut file is the bookshelf. And I love this one. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's super cute. And um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I it was kind of my favorite one <laughs> so I actually have this photo of the two of the kids that I take care of and um, big sister is reading to the baby well big sister doesn't even know how to read this is not the biggest sister this is the middle one she's three but she is acting like she's reading to him and he's just sitting there looking at the book and um, he's probably about six months old in this photo so I just think it's a really cute interaction between the two of them and so I thought I would go ahead and document that for them and put it in I don't know if it'll go in her book or his book but um, I thought it was super cute so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I started by backing my cut file with these uh, word it's a it's a 12 by 12 paper from Paige Evans that has a bunch of different phrases or sayings on it or words and so I went ahead and just cut out a couple of those to be like titles of the books to go on the spine of the book and I think that's super cute and I'm kind of staying with a blue teal peach kind of a look uh, in the photograph he's got teal pajamas she's got a peach sweater and then she's got blue bedding and then there's some tan and so I brought in the tan as well by using some craft card stock just to make it all go together and match really well now when I was cutting these little flowers out of this uh, paper here I made sure to cut them so that they go along the spine and they're not kind of random they're just they they line up perfectly down the spine like it's supposed to be that way and then some of these books you actually see from the side view or the bottom view so you actually see the pages in the books and those ones I'm going to use kind of a, a white paper that has some tan print on it or cream color print on it to represent the book pages and I think that works well since the cut file is such a vibrant white um, you'll be able to see all of those book pages no problem this one I decided to go with a little bit of a darker um, look like it's an antique paper or uh, yeah like it's got antique papers in it or an antique book and then I am coloring the glasses using a wink of Stella pen I kind of wanted it a little lighter peach but I ended up not having a light peach color and I probably should have just pulled out some watercolor or even um, an ink pad with a little bit of water on it to make it lighter but it ends up working out okay I do lighten it up a little bit with some uh, paper uh, paper glitz from Picket Fence Studio. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, and it, this is just like a, I think it's called, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it is called Sparkle. And um, it was really kind of runny when I first got it, but as it's been sitting in on my shelf here for quite some time, it's getting stiffer and stiffer. When I first got it, you couldn't really put it through a stencil without having it run. And now it's about the per perfect consistency to go ahead and put through your stencil. But it is basically um, almost like a, it's white, but it doesn't dry white. It's kind of, it dries just like with a silver shimmer. So that's what I decided to put on those glasses. Kind of like when you buy a pair of glasses and they've got a sparkle inside the, um, the plastic portion, like the molded portion of the plastic uh, like a pair of sunglasses not wire rimmed frames of course but the other kind so anyway I'm using this striped paper to do the um, vase and I went ahead and used a little acetate on the vase and on the lenses of the glasses so they do pick up any light that might be um, shining on them and I probably should have done the same with the lampshade but I didn't but I guess you know lampshades can be cloth as well so don't think it really matters but um and you know there's such little bits it's not going to really matter anyway but I, I went ahead and took the time to make the acetate make it shimmery and I think it looks good and I, I like the way that it it's ended up looking 
<coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use this peachy paper to do the lampshade. I like it because it doesn't look solid. I like that it has a little bit of um, texture to it and color that is uh, varying depths of color. And I think that's how things are in real life because we don't see anything as a flat color anyway when you're in a room. Even if it is a wall with flat colors, there's always shadows. There's always light that hits it in a certain way so it doesn't look like it's a solid color. So that is what, one of the main reasons I prefer to use papers that read as a solid, even though they're not a solid. So I've decided to pull out a couple of Distress Oxide inks and I'm just using one of the, my sponge daubers to pick up some of that ink and shade the leaves on the uh, plant. And I'm using two different colored I, colors. I think the bright green one is Twisted Citron and the other one I think is maybe Peeled Paint. Um, any greens would work, but I didn't want it to be a flat color. I wanted some highs and lows. So um, just like my papers, you know, nothing in, in life is off a flat color when you look at it from a distance. So same with leaves. They all have a little variation in color. And so that's why I always kind of go with that kind of a, a look, that mottled look. And now I am trimming off the outside edges of my papers by about a uh, an eighth of an inch all the way around and then I'm backing it with some card stock but it's uh, just craft card stock so that is black white and craft are pretty much the only solid card stocks that I really keep on hand for for anything and um, I really like the way that this craft looks with this layout and I have this um, library book card that's in a craft colored pocket and so i'm going to go ahead and use that on this layout as well that's going to be my little journaling area i have an acrylic piece from color cast designs that says lost in a book so i'm going to use that the little light bulb that's on the uh lamp i did use some vellum in there just to uh kind of soften it up a little bit and there's a little bit of yellow vellum in the little tiny piece there to indicate that it's like a glow or something to that effect. Um, using my tiny attacher to uh, fold down that upper left hand corner to give a little detail sticking out from between the pieces. I like the back side of this blue paper as well. It's got a pink ledger on it and I think that works really well with these peachy pink pieces. And so I thought I would go ahead and fold that over and then I will be tucking a few things in to that little area and bringing those pieces down across to the uh, little um, checkout book card there. I'm just using liquid glue to adhere my piece down. I didn't even take the backer off of this acrylic piece mostly because um, I don't want the lines to show through so much from the uh, craft piece there. So uh, the liquid glue is going to make everything stay just fine, and I don't think it's going to do anything to the backer. I haven't had a problem with doing that yet. I do it sometimes. Don't do it always. just depends on the piece. I was playing with the idea of putting these wood books on here. I decide not to because it, it makes it a little bit heavy, um, but I did play with the idea. I kind of liked it a little plainer. It was getting to be a little bit overdone. So I'm going to save those for a different layout. But I am going to use these uh, frames and postage stamps out of the July Some Assemblage Required Embellishment Box because I think they're going to bring in more of this blue and they're going to look really good tucked in here. I do end up pulling out a Stampin' Up! punch that has a label and I punch a couple of pieces of the same paper that I used for the lampshade to bring in this label look or ticket look uh, over um, into this upper left hand corner and then I'm going to do the same down where it's going to attach to that paper that slides in and out of the little um, folder, folder piece there where the title is. And I think that looks really good. I, I'm really liking the way that that looks. I even used the inside of one of the film strips and tucked it in because it has a lighter blue border around it. And I think that looks good too. It's kind of fun. 
just to bring in some different textures and a couple of different shades of blue. And then I'm going to add a few down here and those ones are going to be stapled on because I don't want to, them to get lost when you pull the paper um, out, of the, out of the little envelope thing. And I want to be able to do a little journaling on there. Now I know that most of the journaling is going to be hidden, but I think I'm going to try and do most of it up at the top so that it's not completely hidden. And then I might do a little bit of hidden journaling inside the envelope on that same card. So I'm just uh, using that tiny attacher to bring in yet another texture. And I really like the way that that's looking. And I am going to use a little bit of glue to adhere it in place so that it's not putting so much strain on the tiny attacher piece and when you pull it in and out it will um, not uh, rip free. That was my main concern. And then I did a little bit of stitching. Actually, I did quite a bit of stitching. I stitched along the bottom of the two bookshelves in those uh, little cutout gaps and then I stitched along the card here uh, but I did that after I pulled it out so that it still is able to be removed from its little slot and I went all the way around the outside of the layout with a dark blue stitch and I did a little stitching at the top of the lampshade so it looks like it's hanging from the stitched area and that is it you guys thanks so much for watching I uh, hope you have enjoyed this week with cut files that I've created can't wait to get started on next week's cut files that MK has done um, can't wait to see what you guys all create with this and I will see you guys again tomorrow with another video bye bye